Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about how you as a front-end developer can build logic because one of the things which I find fascinating and common across a lot of people is that they say that I'm good with writing code and things, but I'm not so strong with the logical part. So let's just take this video and let's just understand what it takes to build your logical understanding as a front-end developer because it's much more than just knowing the syntax of the language. So the best way to do that actually is to start building things which require a little bit of complex logic. So I'm going to spend some time in this video walking you through a simple app example and walking you through each and every step which we'll take along the way in order to understand what sort of logic that would require. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Now, before we start, I'm going to be using CodeDamp Playgrounds. You can spin up a free playground online so that you don't have to set up and worry about all the files and everything on your system. Just go to codedamp.com slash playgrounds. It's free to use. Sign up for an account, click on HTML and CSS playground. Give it a title like my, let's say my countdown project. Let's try to build that and create a snippet. The moment you do that, you will be presented with something like this, which is your own personal area. I'm going to make my playground private for now because I don't want anyone to access and modify and, you know, just see my code just yet because I might be writing bad code, but you can make this public and you can also invite collaborators. You can build this with friends. So maybe you have a friend who is also trying to get into web development. You guys can work together on a single playground that is in real time. So you'll see your cursors, you'll see what the other person is moving on, which files they are and so on. But anyway, because this is a video tutorial and because unfortunately I'm alone right now, I'm going to be sticking with a private playground with no collaborators at the moment. Now, we said that let's just go ahead and build countdown in this app. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and first of all, remove this. I'm going to start by cleaning up my script.js file as well and my CSS file as well. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to start off by saying that my countdown app, basic front end stuff, right? Next up, it makes sense for us to create a generic sort of thing where, you know, let's say if I have a little framework or something which allows me to use some sort of logic in JavaScript world to kickstart the counter. Now, this is where things get interesting. I might choose one way, you might choose another way. It is possible that both of us are right, right? But it's just the way that you, how you think about things is how you build logic. So one thing, one way I could think about is that what if we could have something like, you know, div class as counter variable, and then I have data start as zero and data end as it should be probably like data start as at 10 and data end as zero so what we are essentially doing here is i'm creating a class first of all which you know it's just a selector and then i'm assigning two specific attributes data start and data end by the way you can assign anything after data if you haven't realized that data dash star is valid html attribute and what i'm trying to do here is specify two values until which this counter would hold information that is what i thought could be a better way you could have just you know not used this and hard coded the values in javascript world itself but just having this data layer in the html itself gives you much more freedom and control once the logic is developed so let's just go ahead and try to develop this logic now in the javascript world so i'm gonna first of all i'm gonna try to get all the all the video all the you know divs which are counter variable because we can have multiple so i'm gonna have something like my counters is document dot query selector all and then counter variable so this gives us access to all the counter variables so now we can say for let i zero i less than my counters dot length i plus plus and over here i'm gonna start with a counter is my counters of i now even though we just have one over here we could have two and this should probably work the same way if i have something like this right and we could also have a you know just to customize it even more we could have a step and we could have a duration as a customizable attribute also but anyway what we have over here so far is that we have access to each of these individual devs in a single you know fashion in this loop which is running we'll have the first div with us then we'll have the second div with us as counter so let's just go ahead and start by 
extracting out these values because this is what we need in the JavaScript world, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say const, let's say const start, start, stamp, I don't know, counter dot get attribute data start. Or we could have also said counter dot data set dot start. I think that also works. Data set is object of all the these things but we will obviously verify that as well and we can have end stamp similarly counter dot data set dot end stamp or dot end right so you can just console log div start stamp and end stamp so you see over here if i go to the browser logs now and if i see what's happening okay so we don't get any logs because we had a typo here which says that you know it should be a class not a counter variable tag you can see now in the browser logs i get div the first div is 10 0 which is you know this one and the second div is 12 2 which is awesome that means we are getting the values right now the next thing is that we want to start this counter so we have the values so we, what we can do is something like give a default value as well or you know maybe just skip it as well just to avoid confusion for now but anyway the thing is once we have these values we can also parse into them so i can say parse in something like this so that this gets converted into numbers now i can say something like start counter with counter as the you know the html element itself start stamp which is the starting time and end stamp which is the ending time and you can see we are getting an error that start counter is not defined so let's just go ahead and define this function over here which will say the counter element start time end time right so now essentially what we have to do is all we have to do is set timers inside this counter to make sure it properly increments and decrements properly right based on the start time and end time duration first things first we can say if end time is you know greater than start time that doesn't make sense so we can just say console.error or console.warn rather invalid counter with end time greater than start time because that will just lead to you know just you taking down the counter infinitely so and we can also just console log the counter itself otherwise if that is not the condition we just return from here if that is not the condition let's just try to set an interval right so set interval is a function which will run every single second in this case because we have given one second and we'll do something so what we wanted to do is we wanted to say counter element dot inner html is equal to something right now that could be let counter is um start time or start i'm i'm pretty bad with variable names over here so maybe you can choose better ones but we can have counter element dot inner html as counter then i can just say counter minus minus which will just decrease the count and i can just say if counter is equal to end time then we want to clear this interval so i can say this is interval clear interval intv and there we go right so so far it looks absolutely okay to me and we also have these two counters now spinning up and ready let's see how they operate and you can see it stopped at one and it stopped at three right so what we can do is maybe just include the check in the starting instead of on the end that will lead us to you know properly showing the messages another thing which we can do is also initialize it right over here and uh, you know just do a counter minus minus right away so that we immediately see the counter once the javascript is ready instead of waiting one more second we can also go ahead and inside our css play with this counter a little bit we can say font size 40 pixel i don't know you could yeah you could just make them a little bigger and you can also say let's say div id my counters and you can say that these counters over here my counters display flex you know yeah and you can say margin left 20 pixels right so now you have a little bit of spacing between the counters you have some parallel counters going on as well and these counters are absolutely dynamic in nature that means you do not have to you know go into javascript world anytime again if you want to create a new counter you can say this is this starts at 99 and this stops at 90 and it'll just work fine right so you can see the third counter which we have it'll start working and it'll just stop 
when it hits 90. Similarly, for the other counters as well, you can see this counter will stop at 0, this stopped at 2, this stopped at 90. Awesome. Now, what you can do as a developer on this project over here is you can go ahead and build on top of this. The basic functionality is already done in start counter, right? And in the in the syntax itself. What I want you to do is go ahead and introduce two more things in this project. The first thing which I want you to introduce is the ability the ability and i'm just gonna write to do here to do for you the ability to add a step data point what does that mean that means i can say data dash step as an attribute and let's say if i say it two two as the number then it will step down two you know so it'll go from 10 to 8 to 6 to 4 to 0 that way similarly the second thing you can do is add the seconds or you know adds the add the duration field that means if i'm giving it a data dash duration of 100 that means it's 100 milliseconds right that is 0 0.1 second or if i'm giving it a data dash duration of 2000 that means it's two seconds so it will go from 10 to 9 in two seconds not in one second which is hard coded currently over here. So, yep, that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you were able to think a little bit clearer, build a little bit of more logic into your brain. And that is how you do things. That's the only way you can do things. That is through just building stuff which requires logic. So, yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. I'm gonna make this playground public. I'm going to send and I'm going to just, you know, keep this link in the description so you guys can copy this playground for kid, build your own. That is all for this one. I'm going to go ahead and see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.